I've been using this UFO test for many years, but now is that I finally fully understand it and I want to break this down for you. So you understand that the motion clarity depends on the speed that you're moving the camera. So for example, if you're playing a game that's 30 frames per second, if you move the camera slow enough, <laughs> the motion clarity is actually acceptable. And for example, this video I am recording is uh, 30 hertz, 30 frames per second. At this a specific uh, speed that I am using, the motion clarity on the video should be four milliseconds or, or four, four pixels of motion blur per 1000 pixels per second. <laughs> so this is what you need to understand. The speed, what does this uh, speed uh, mean? So when you open the UFO test by default, this is the speed and it's so fast and it looks blurry. <laughs> so what is 960 pixels per second? What does this mean? So we have to understand that this UFO test is a 1080p picture. This is just 1080p. So at 960 pixels per second, the, the picture, the UFO test is going to take two seconds to cover the entire screen because 960 multiplied by two is 1920. So 1080p resolution is 1920. So the amount of pixels you have on the horizontal axis is 1920 and you know, uh, 1080 on the, on the vertical. So because this is a 1080p picture, it doesn't matter if you have a 4K screen, it's going to take the same amount of time. The difference between 4K and 1080p is that at 4K, you have actually four times the amount of pixels. So you have twice the amount of, picture of, of pixels in each axis, okay? So 1920 by two, that's 3840. So the 4K is 3840 by 2160. A 4K uh, screen has like four 1080p screens inside it, okay? That's why it doesn't matter if you have a 4K or 1080p, this test pattern, this UFO test pattern is going to take two, about two seconds to go from left to right, okay? because the picture is not 4K. So this 960 pixels per second is actually uh, translated on a 4K screen to 1920 pixels per second. But actually the resolution of the, of the UFO test is actually 1080p, okay? So what that means, for example, the eyes of the UFO are one pixel on a 1080p screen it's a one pixel black on a 1080p screen, but on an OLED uh, 4K screen or any 4K screen, that eye is actually four pixels, okay? So that's the first thing we need to understand, the speed. This is all about the speed. So what the Blurbuster's law uh, states is that one millisecond of persistence is equal to one pixel of motion blur per 1000 pixels per second. Wow, that sounds so confusing. So what does persistence mean? What is one millisecond of persistence? What is persistence? So persistence is the pixel visibility time. Okay, so how long you can see the pixels? That's very easy to calculate when we have 60 Hertz on a sample and hold display we know that each frame stays on the screen all the time. So at 60 Hertz, we have 60 images in one second. So we divide one second uh, and 60, and we get uh, this number. This is easy. Just go one second, you divide once one and 60, you get this number in seconds, and you multiply it by 1000 to get the number in milliseconds. Uh, so that's, that's how you get 60 milliseconds of persistence. So what this means is that at 60 hertz, you are getting the pixel visibility time is 60 milliseconds of persistence. So the Blurbuster's law states that what that means is that you will get 16 
pixels of motion blur at 1000 pixels per second. So at this speed, 960 pixels per second, this is an approximation. At this speed, you are actually going to get 16 pixels of motion blur. So 60 hertz, 60 frames per second. If an object is moving on the screen at this speed, the motion blur is 16 pixels, so that's blurry, okay? So how can you get a better motion clarity? Just move the object slowly. <laughs> Go slowly, bro. So if you cut in half the speed of the object, so let's say you pan the camera slower, you go from 16 milliseconds, you go down to 8 milliseconds of persistence. So 8 milliseconds of persistence means 8 pixels of motion blur. So that's still um, still blurry. So how can you get a better motion clarity? Move the camera slower, <laughs> slowly. So move it half the speed. So if, if, instead, if you go half the speed, now <clears throat> at this uh, speed, on at 60 hertz, you're getting actually 4 milliseconds of persistence, okay? So this actually looks very good. So that's only four pixels of motion blur, okay? That's very, very good. <laughs> what if you go down to half? Now you have two pixels of motion blur. That's almost perfect, almost perfect. Of course, how can you get one pixel so it is perfectly clear? 120. So instead of 60, if you have 120, this two milliseconds becomes one millisecond. So what that means is that you will get basically this 1080p picture moving at this speed perfectly clear. Like it is the same. So what this means as is that the motion clarity, so the clarity of the test at this uh, speed at 120 hertz is the same as if the picture is not moving at all. So the picture is absolutely perfect. So, but this is a 1080p picture. What if you want a 4K picture to look perfect? You need then half <laughs> of the speed. So you would need, instead of one millisecond, you would need 0 0.5 milliseconds. Okay, that's what it is. As simple as that. So what I'm going to recommend you is to play around with the speed of the test so you understand that the speed has a lot to do with the motion clarity. So for example, I'm going to recommend you to do this, this uh, exercise. You know, if you have an LG C1, you can also exercise the motion clarity settings, Motion Pro. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video specifically showing you uh, motion Pro and this uh, UFO test pattern but, because I don't want to make this video too long. But if you don't have an OLED or, or a display with backlight strobing, you can, uh, and it's at 144 hertz or 120, you can play around with the different refresh rates and the different speeds. So what I want you to do to fully understand this and see it for yourself is, for example, you can have 120 uh, hertz at 960 uh, pixels per second, okay? So what I want you to see is that the motion clarity you're getting here is the same as having the display at 60 hertz. So if I change the, the resolution of the display and I go down to 60 hertz, for example, I go 60, apply. So now I have 60 hertz. So now the motion clarity is the same at 480 pixels per second. So at 60 hertz, 480 pixels per second is the same motion clarity as 120 hertz and 960 pixels per second. Because I reduce the frequency, but I also reduce the speed of the object proportionally. So that's the, that's the, that's the exercise I, I would recommend you to do to fully understand this. And I would actually recommend you to go slower. So go slower so you can get a better motion clarity to understand it. So for example, if even if I use, let's say, what for example, let's calculate what is the motion clarity I am getting here 
at this specific speed. How clear can I see this picture? At 60 hertz, 240 pixels per second. This is like a math <laughs> exercise. Well, very easy. We know that at 60 hertz, we are getting 16 pixels of motion blur at this uh, speed, okay? At 960 pixels per second. So if I go down half, now instead of 16 pixels of motion clarity, now I have eight. 16 pixels, instead of 16 pixels of motion blur, now I have of eight pixels of motion blur, okay? And if I reduce this in half one more time, then I have four pixels of motion blur. So for example, if you want to see how good if the, is the motion clarity of this LG C1 with black frame insertion, this is what it is. If you have a 60 hertz screen, let's say you're thinking, oh, should I get the LG C1 for that black from insertion at 120, ah, I don't know how good it looks. This is how you can know. You have 60 hertz on your screen and you reduce the, the speed of the object to 240. How can, you, how can you make sure that that's the case? Do the math. One divided by 60, that gives you the pixel visibility time you multiply that for one by 1000 to get it in milliseconds so you have at 60 hertz you have 16.6 .6. then that is the the motion clarity using 960 pixels per second now if you cut that in half the speed in half down to 480 you are also reducing the pixel visibility time in half okay so now you have eight and if you cut down in half one more time down to 240, now you have four. You divide this in half one more time. Four, okay? This is the motion clarity of an LG C1 with black frame insertion at 120 frames, okay? How do I know that? Very simple. If I have 120 on my LG C1, let me explain you. So we have 4K, we're gonna change to 4K 120 on this LG C1, yes. And now we're, we're gonna see this, this is gonna change to 120 and I'm gonna change the speed to 960 pixels per second. So baseline, sample and hold, we are going to calculate the motion clarity. So we have one divided by 120, that give us this number in second, and then we multiply this by 1000 so we get 8.3 milliseconds. So that means eight pixels of motion blur at this speed. But when we use Motion Pro High on this LG C1, we double the motion clarity. Why? Because we reduce the pixel visibility time in half. How? Black from insertion, Motion Pro High, what it's doing is instead of showing you the entire uh, picture, and holding that until the new one comes, what it's doing is showing you 50% of the picture and the rest is black. And it's scrolling down that section of the screen, which is 50% all the time, the rest is black, 50% black, and it's scrolling that down. So what, I, what that is doing, it is reducing the pixel visibility time in half. So we reduce that in half. And this is the motion clarity that we get. So if I go here and I use Motion Pro High, so I go here to Game Optimizer mode, and I go down here to OLED Motion Pro, and I use High, boom, I just double the motion clarity. So now what I see here is four milliseconds of persistence. This is amazing. So now if I reduce the speed in half, now I have two milliseconds of persistence. And if I reduce it in half one more time, then I have one millisecond of persistence. So what that means is one pixel of motion blur only at this speed, 240 pixels per second. So this is how slow I have to pan the camera on this LG C1 using the maximum motion clarity settings to get a perfectly clear uh, picture that is 1080p, okay?
If it's 4K, I actually need to move this half the speed. So for a 4K uh, game, so if I'm playing a game at 4K and I want to see every single pixel perfectly, like zero blur, like there's no difference between the static image and me moving and panning the camera. This is the speed that I have to use. This is mind blowing. This is so, this is explaining you motion uh, clarity so clear. <laughs> so if you play around with this, you will, I promise you, you will understand 100% fully the, the Blur Buster's Law and you will understand motion clarity 100%. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions.